All right. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going this way around because I did my ultra marathon on the weekend and my legs still hurt. Um, and this week's topic is partly because of that, but largely because in a recent exam, students seem to get their understanding of the gluteal muscles a little bit arse backwards, if you'll excuse the pun. So we're going down here to the gluteal region. I've looked at the muscles, the, the large muscles of the hip and the small muscles of the hip in the past. Today I'm doing three muscles, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. We're going to talk about what they attach to, what happens when they contract, what their jobs are, what their innovation is, and then the thing I really want to get clear is what happens if they don't work properly. I think it's pretty straightforward, I'm just going to try and keep it super clear, alright? I'm not entirely sure this was the best idea. Is my leg still hurt? And now I've got it. I didn't think this through, did I? Anyway, gluteus maximus. So the shape of the buttocks is largely formed by gluteus maximus. It's a really big muscle, which tells you it's there for power, powerful movements. And the reason it's so powerful is because it's, it aids in lifting our entire body weight. This is the gluteal cleft between the two gluteal bits. That's the vertical bit, and the gluteal fold is the horizontal bit beneath the gluteal bit, the buttocks, right? What can we see with gluteus maximus then? Well, gluteus maximus, um, it's coming from, so this is the pelvis, this is the ilium. Right, so this is the posterior bit of what we're looking at here. So this is the ilium, right? Ilium, um, ischium, and then pubis around here. So gluteus maximus then is clearly coming from the ilium part of the pelvis. Now, if you've got a really good ilium, like not, not you, but if you've got a skeleton with a really good ilium, you can see uh, anterior, posterior and inferior gluteal lines, little lines on here, right? Which show you where the muscles attach. This, I mean, this is a good skeleton. It's a very expensive skeleton, but I'm not seeing those lines. I might have to look at a real ilium to see them. Anywho, it also attaches to the sacrum and a little bit to the coccyx, right? So it's, coming, it's attaching to all of these bones down here. Um, and then it's running across the hip joint to the femur. Now, if this is the diaphysis here, this big lump is the greater trochanter, this is the little trochanter. Now, just down here, we haven't really got one, there's a gluteal tuberosity, a little, little knobbly bit. Some of the fibres of gluteus maximus insert into the femur, so this is the posterior femur of the gluteal tuberosity, but most of the fibres don't. Most of the fibres insert into the fascia. What I mean is that, um, is that the, the lower limb is covered in a layer of fairly tough, deep fascia. Holds everything in place, right? Keeps the muscles in groups. Um, and that fascia is thickened laterally. Here's the hip, the knees down, down there. Um, this is the iliotibial tract, or the iliotibial band. So it goes from the ilium all the way down to the tibia down here. Now this iliotibial tract or iliotibial band, something else that runners care about because if it gets too tight, tensor fasciolata pulls on it, another muscle causes a bit of knee pain. So you foam roller it. Anyway, um, the reason it's here is to give some stability to the lower limb when you're standing and walking and that sort of thing. But all it is is a thickening of the fascia, of the fasciolata, of the lower limb, of the, of the, of the thigh here. So we see it as this band, uh, and largely when you're dissecting it, it's like thinner here and thicker here, so you kind of cut it out and make it look pretty, make it stand out. Now, my point is that most of the fibres of gluteus maximus insert into the iliotibial tract, into the deep fascia of the leg. So gluteus maximus crosses the hip joint and it's very good at helping you stand up. And what I had to do then was to raise almost all of my body weight up. So extension of the hip joint, right? So this is flexion of the thigh at the hip joint. So this is, that is extension of the thigh at the hip joint. Oh. Um, hamstrings are good at that. Gluteus maximus is, is also good. So when you walk, you're mostly using your hamstrings and not really your glutes, the gluteus maximus is like, is like your turbo boost. It's like your extra jet. It gives you that extra power when you need to 
extend your hip joint and it's particularly powerful when you're extending from a, a flexed position or a partially flexed position most notably when we're getting out of a chair right so when you're sat in a chair your, your hip joint is flexed you're at 90 degrees right so when you stand up shouldn't need to use your arms oh then you're engaging gluteus maximus and going from going from a flexed hip to an extended hip of course when you sit down when you're lowering yourself gluteus maximus is also lowering you slowly against gravity so that's gluteus maximus great when you're getting out of chairs running sprinting jumping climbing um going upstairs that sort of thing that's what gluteus maximus is for all right now gluteus maximus is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve there are two gluteal nerves there's an inferior gluteal nerve and a superior gluteal nerve remember that because look here's gluteus maximus it's big but it's it's the inferior most muscle of the gluteal muscles take gluteus maximus off here we can see at least gluteus medius um, this might be gluteus minimus here although it's not labeled as such but gluteus medius and minimus then see how they're higher up so they're innervated by the superior gluteal nerve inferior gluteal nerve right gluteus medius and minimus are also running from the ilium but they're both running to the greater trochanter of the femur oh the greater trochanter of the femur is this lovely big bony bit here right so they're running across from the ilium to the greater trochanter of the femur um, the medius is, is more superficial, the minimus is deep. Now what this means is, is that, again, they're not actually powerful extensors, they're powerful abductors of the hip joint. So if they run across from there, because the greater trochanter is, look, this is lateral, it's sticking out to the side here, because they pull out there, they're actually quite good at pulling on the greater trochanter and pulling the femur out away from the midline. So gluteus medius and minimus are powerful abductors of the thigh at the hip joint. So you pull on the greater trochanter, the femur gets pulled away from the midline. So this is abduction of the hip. So for gluteus medius and minimus, bunk, right? That's abduction of the hip. Ugh. So abduction of the thigh at the hip. And if you think about it, because of that, if you, if you think about this joint, so if, the, um, if the hip joint then is partially flexed, um, because we're running across this joint to the greater trochanter, if you pull on the greater trochanter, you'll also get some medial rotation of the hip joints. They're quite good at medial rotation of the femur at the hip. Gluteus maximus does the opposite. It, it can help with lateral rotation again, um, but it's, it, you know, it's when you flex like this, right? So gluteus, gluteus maximus, whoa, powerful extensor of the hip. Gluteus medius and minimus, powerful abductors of the hip. Why is all this important? Well, it's because we're bipedal animals and we walk. Um, and every time, I've said this before, but every time we take a step, we take one foot off the ground. So that means that every time you take one foot off the ground, hey look, I can take my foot off the ground and put it back on again, and my pelvis stays level. This is gluteus medius and minimus on this side, because I'm taking this foot off the ground. They're contracting and keeping my pelvis level. If gluteus medius and minimus don't contract, my pelvis drops, and if I try and bring my foot back down, oh, it scuffs on the floor. That's the concept that students seem to be struggling with. So, um, if the superior gluteal nerve is damaged, or maybe the L5 root, which is part of the superior gluteal nerve, um, but if, you, if, the, if the L5 nerve root was damaged, you'd see foot drop and other things as well, right? So just consider damage to the superior gluteal nerve. It could happen through trauma, uh, through like hip replacement surgery, hip fracture, or like an intramuscular, you know, an intramuscular injection, injection into the buttock. If you do it in the wrong place, you might damage the superior gluteal nerve. If you want to test to see if um, gluteus medius and minimus are working, you just ask. <laughs> I've, I've run 100k, so um, I'm wobbly. Um, you ask 
the person to stand on one leg and you look for the stability and you look for the pelvis staying level. If gluteus medius and minimus are weak, they will struggle to keep the pelvis level, right? Um, What this means is, for you, if you have um, a weakness in gluteus medius and minimus, it means that, that as you take that foot off the ground, the pelvis drops, so the foot doesn't swing through, so you have to compensate. And what we typically see is Trendelenburg sign. The Trendelenburg sign is when you ask somebody to stand on one leg, the pelvis drops to the other side. And that's a sign that gluteus medius and minimus are weak for some reason. So you see the person then leaning out, see if you lean over that way? Um, if you lean your body weight over the side with the pathology, over the weak side, your body weight can lift the hip up on that side and you can swing your foot through. You might see also see a swinging gait, and a swinging gait then is the pelvis drops and you swing the foot out to the outside. Right? So you Pelvis drops, swing the foot out to round. Or you might see a high steppage gait. So the pelvis drops, so you bring the knee forward more to compensate, to get the foot through. So a high steppage gait, um, swinging gait, Trendelenburg sign, those are all signs that the pelvis isn't staying level when you take one foot off the ground. If the pelvis isn't staying level, then that's gluteus medius and gluteus minimus, and maybe the superior gluteal nerve or something like that. All right? So Trendelenburg's sign is hip dropping to the opposite side, to the weakness. Um, and then you've got waddling gait, gluteal gait, high steppage gait, uh, swinging gait, all those sorts of things. That's it. That's all I wanted to do. Gluteus maximus, extensor of the hip, powerful when the thigh is flexed to the hip. Gluteus medius and minimus, abductors of the hip. Their job is to keep the pelvis level when you take the leg on the opposite side to the muscle off the floor. So if the weakness is on one side, it's the foot on the other side that's gonna drag or something strange is gonna to happen to it. Those are the key points. Right. Another cup of tea. Cup of tea is a uh, recovery drink of choice, right? I'll be fine this time next week. See you next week!